Hello, my name is Patrick Yance, and uh, I'm with the Modular Data Center Solutions Group with SGI, and I'm here to give you a demonstration, a quick tour of the model of the uh, four rack air cube, Ice Cube Air. Internally, uh, we call this code name the R16. And R16 denotes uh, R in the letter, denotes the number of racks, and 16 is the number of racks that it can expand out to. So here we go. So what you see here is the head unit, and I'm going to pull this off in a second, but you're seeing the uh, control panel, and you're seeing the uh, touch screen of the monitoring control system, all the main breakers for the main power panel. Uh, included in this panel are a couple of uh, power monitoring uh, screens that are not showing here, but are actually in existence. So you have a monitoring control panel, you have the main breaker, and then you have uh, some additional power monitoring uh, screens along with uh, breakers for things like lights and fans and things like that. Now across the line of the Ice Cube Air uh, you're going to see this exact same panel uh, but depending on the unit this panel will be a different size. So the same uh, strategy or philosophy around the design is that you have a primary electrical panel in the head unit and the head unit is where all of the electrical power uh, wiring, excuse me, which I'm going to show you in a second, all the power wiring and water connect to the head unit. So I'm going to pull this off real quick and show you the side where all the power and the water comes in. So what we have here is the, we'll call it the left hand side of the R16 or the Ice Cube Air 4 rack unit. You can see there's some little holes up here. That's actually where the, uh, the power enters. And you see this gray line here, that's actually a simulation of a uh, water line, which is a three-quarter inch standard garden hose type water connection that would need to be installed on site and connected here. So when this arrives on site, you have these holes here for power entry, and you have a three-quarter inch uh, water uh, stub to connect uh, the, the site water to. So to deploy this head unit requires power at the voltage uh, that has been ordered for this unit and a three-quarter inch water connection and a level surface. What you see here also are the intake louvers for the entire system. So this is where air enters into the unit from the outside and we're going to go into this what's inside of the unit in much more detail here shortly. So I'm going to rotate this thing back so you can see excuse me that we have the exhaust in the back. So let me stop it here. So what, these are the exhaust louvers. They're all automated louvers uh, connected to the control system. And the control system I'll go into in great detail here shortly. So again, we're going to do a side shot of this is the head unit. It holds four racks at 51 RU. Uh, and it can, be, it can hold uh, four post racks or four standard 24 inch roll-in racks or cabinets, excuse me. Primary door here for entry. Uh, there's actually, this model is not showing it, but there's actually a, a, another door right here where you see the word Ice Cube Air. This is the, what we call the cold aisle entry, and this is the hot aisle entry. Again, we have the airflow going through the system from front to back. Off the shelf, four racks, 51 RU, and it can also support roll-in racks uh, of uh, 24 inches wide up to 89.25 inches in height. So standard SGI racks can roll right in here, four of them. Uh, the unit has uh, several options that a customer can, ha can order, uh, as well as can be designed to order from the ground up. That's really key to uh, future customers is that uh, we do offer this out of the box the way you see it, with four racks, with certain voltage, or you can have it custom built depending on what the customer's needs are. The unit not unlike all of the units, all the Ice Cube Air units that SGI offers, is expandable. And this particular unit expands out, has, excuse me, has three expansion units that, that total 16 racks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove a couple of these units. Okay, so what you have here is an expansion unit. And this entire section you see from my hand to the outside is the cooling compartment. This is where all of the cooling and or heating, uh, whatever's required, to keep the, uh, the, the devices that are racked inside the unit at the proper temperature and humidity. It's all done through this separate compartment. So you can see that the servers 
are well away, or the hardware devices are well away from the outside air. And the air has to travel through what I'm going to describe shortly that's inside the cooling compartment to reach the, uh, the servers. So what we have here in the cooling uh, compartment from the outside in are the filters. You first start with the filter system. And the filter system uh, can support from MERV 5 up to MERV 16 or any specific type of filter, excuse me, filtration that a customer requires. And we typically look at a customer location and make recommendations for the type of filters that are required for the unit. So the first piece is the filtration. The next piece is the four-phased evaporative media system, which again is controlled by the head unit. The entire cooling system, really the entire unit that is the expansion unit, is controlled by the head unit's proprietary software in the monitoring control system. So what you see here again is the filters. We have the four-phased evaporative media system, and that simply means that you have four separate sections of the evaporative media system that are controlled uh, by the uh, motors and by the louvers, excuse me, by the uh, pumps, etc., that are here. You notice that there's uh, some, some water pipes coming out of the side here that connect to the evaporative media system. And all this, again, is controlled by the monitoring control system. Behind that, you have the supplementary cooling. So the primary cooling is outside air. Right? So the air can flow from, from this direction through the unit to the servers through filtration. The secondary means of, of cooling is the evaporative media system. And that's a very complex, a lot of research went into that evaporative media section. Again, four different stages depending on the needs of the cold aisle or the inlet temperature of the servers. And then behind there, depending on where you're deployed in the world, SGI offers the supplementary DX coil. So I'm going to turn that on. You see here in green, that's the section that you have for the DX coil. Now the DX coil would be connected to a condensing unit that would be sitting outside if the customer required it. So what we have in here again is the DX coil and or a chiller coil. So this is a coil that's added as supplementary cooling depending on the deployment location. Right? Uh, in some environments in the world, uh, the system evaporative media alone uh, will, will not support the, uh, the environment. So uh, in very few places of the, uh, of the world, and, and, and SGI has done a ton of research to be able to identify for customers clearly if they require a DX coil or not, and or a chill water coil. So again, there's piping that would come out outside the unit here in the back that would add to a condensing unit in the case of a DX unit, excuse me, in case of a DX coil option, you'd have wire piping that comes out to a, a condensing unit. If you had chilled water valves and chilled water coil, you'd have uh, chilled water pipes that come out uh, to a chilled water system that's externally. So that's again, supplementary cooling. Me evaporative media system is a single pass system. So when uh, the limited amount of water that's used or required based on the monitoring control system, uh, which provides, which identifies the hot and cold temperature, when it signifies that water is required for the evaporative media system, if it's set up properly, which it is from the beginning, uh, the system, the, the, the water that's uh, added to the evaporative media system uh, will evaporate by the time it hits the ground. That is the research and design. There's actually a drain pan in the bottom of the evaporative media system. So again, the limited amount of water uh, that actually makes it through the evaporative media system uh, would drain out. And each one of the units has a one and a half inch drain. Since it's a single pass system, this particular water uh, does not become any more contaminated and or changed from the time that it came in to the time that it goes out. So it can be drained into an existing sewer system or drained down on the ground, depending on what the customer requires. As well in this cooling uh, section, you have the fans. Again, you have six, in each four rack unit, you have six high frequency variable speed fans. A lot of research has gone into the angle that these fans are deployed at and the types of fans that we use. The reason why they're, they're, they're so important in this aspect is because they are actually drawing the air from the outside, creating a positive airflow pressure for the servers, which provides a, an even temperature from top to bottom of the rack, which is very difficult to do in a data center environment. The angle of the fans are very important. They, provide, they ensure that we create what we call a tsunami in the cold aisle. So what that means is that the air is mixed. The most difficult thing to do in any type of uh, containerized deployment is ensure that the outside air that you're using is properly mixed and provided to the face, to the inlet of the servers or hardware that's in the racks. Each one of these fans, again, is variable speed and an N plus one configuration. The entire unit could run on just four fans. So even though each one of these fans can do a certain RPM, 
and a certain and provide a certain amount of airflow. Uh, we provide n plus one, which reduces the amount of power each one of these draws. Um, so that in, in in a typical scenario, again, the maximum wattage for each rack that's allowed in a forty in, in a four rack unit is thirty five kW. So we can cool. 35 kW per rack, that's times 4, is 140 kW. So what you have here after the fans is the, is the IT section. So you see that the, the cooling section, again, is totally separate from the IT section. In the IT section, you have the capability of, of delivering, SGI has the capability of delivering 35 kW per rack in four posts and or wheel-in cabinets. At 35 kW a rack, this cooling uh, environment here, this cooling section can provide up to 140 kWs of, excuse me, 140 kW of IT uh, to this cooling section. So it doesn't matter if you have all that power in one rack or if it's spread across all four racks. Again, the unit, this cooling unit is designed for 140 kW of cooling. Regardless of what you have in here, as far as the way that you want to deploy your servers. And at the same time, this cooling section provides a clear airflow from the top to the bottom of the rack to all four racks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to light up uh, and show uh, how the airflow actually functions here. In scenario A, we have typical outside air, 100% uh, outside air usage. So you have the blue, the blue lines here, excuse me, the blue arrows that are showing how the airflow comes in from the outside, through the cooling system, and through the devices, and up and out of the unit. So in normal airflow environments, normal temperature environments, when, when the temperature is, is at a certain uh, ambient temperature on the outside and moving upwards, uh, we use the, the cooling system uh, to bring uh, outside air through the cooling system and through the servers and up and out of the unit. Uh, in higher temperature, higher humidity environments, we use the server's own heated air and we turn it around by closing the louvers in the back. Again, this is all controlled by the monitoring control system. And we use the server's own heated air and bring it back around through the top of the unit and then again back through the filter, the evaporative media system, and the DX and or chill water coil if it's there, and back to the servers. So th what this provides is a uh, complete system for cooling and heating the what we call the cold owl section uh, regardless of the outside temperature and humidity. So in high humidity uh, scenarios we, we have the louvers that are closed on the front and the outside. Uh, we bring the uh, server zone heated air, uh, which, uh, in, in, which drops the uh, overall relative humidity by about 7%. So uh, contrary to a lot of belief, this particular unit and the cooling system and all the research and design that's gone into it can go into very cold environments, very hot environments at no issue, very low humidity environments, and even very high humidity environments. And what we do with customers is we evaluate where they're deploying their units to ensure that uh, the unit will perform as required and as ordered, uh, depending on their ambient conditions. So we've talked about the airflow and how the system uses this cooling section to, to uh, provide uh, the correct ASHRAE-defined uh, inlet temperature uh, to servers and hardware devices, depending on the temperature, if it's high, low, if the humidity is high or low. Um, what I'm going to move on to now is, uh, again, we emphasized I emphasized, excuse me, that these are two separate sections. So for uh, maintenance, all maintenance, infrastructure maintenance related maintenance happens in this section. And all IT maintenance happens in this particular environment. Uh, what you're not seeing here is uh, the addition of about twice as much space in the hot aisle. So uh, I want to emphasize to those watching the video, especially internally, that uh, there's actually equal space in the front and the back of the racks and roughly 46 to 50 inches in both the hot aisle and the cold aisle for working space. The IT section, as I mentioned before, offers four racks, four post 19 inch racks, or we can provide, there's plenty of room in here uh, for HPC racks, wide racks, high compute racks, or any type of rack a customer wants to roll in. So as part of the electrical system, we have these bus bars, and these bus bars are really designed to order depending on the voltage that's coming into the unit, coming into the head unit. You see that actually these little white boxes are what we call bus plugs or bus boxes. Each one of these provides, again, two bus bars, an A and a B configuration. So out of the box, uh, the, the, the ice cube air unit offers two sources of power, which again can go all the way back to the utility depending on what the customer requires. And we have two sources of power in an A and a B configuration, 
The white box again signifies what the PDU, so the power strips, plug into. So in a, in a typical scenario, you'd have a one cord coming from bus bar A to rack number one, and one cord uh, from bus bar B going to rack number one. So that provides uh, duplicate or redundant power to each rack. So there's very little maintenance required uh, to the air cubes, and that's the same across the entire line, right? So you have the, the cooling section and the IT section. Both can be uh, maintained uh, without interfering or without uh, bringing down any of the systems. So the, the cooling system here uh, requires uh, little maintenance, as I mentioned before. Uh, what you have uh, on a recurring maintenance program would be a replacement of the filters once a quarter. Again, those are filters varying on the deployment location. And you have the actual evaporative media, which is uh, located here again. Uh, once a year, you would replace the evaporative media. So that's really all the maintenance that you have on a recurring, on a recurring maintenance plan. Again, quarterly, you replace the, the filters. Yearly, you replace the evaporative media. The rest of the unit is designed really to function at a very, very long uh, MTT mean time to uh, failure. The fans have a five to seven year uh, mean time to failure. And they're really the only moving parts other than a couple of uh, louvers, motors, and a couple of valves for the water. There's very little moving parts. And what very little moving parts means to a system like this is very little infrastructure power required to provide the cooling to the servers and devices. And that's why this particular section and all the research that has gone into it provides our customers with the lowest PUE possible. This particular unit, and it's the same across, as I mentioned, the entire Ice Cube Air line, provides a PUE of low, as low as 1.02. And we have the research to show that. And how can we get that again so low? And what PUE means is basically the amount of infrastructure power that's required versus the amount of IT power that is being used and or available. As a final overview, you have the airflow from left to right in this video. You have outside air as a primary means of cooling. You have, a sec you have the filtration system, again, depending on where you deploy on the planet. You have the evaporative media system, four stages. I cannot reemphasize how important that is and the amount of research that went into defining the, different, the four different stages that, are, that we use in our evaporative media system. It allows us, SGI, to control the rate of cooling, which is extremely important for IT devices. We have the evaporative media system, and we also have the supplemental DX and or chilled water coil. All of that is sitting behind a bank of fans with a moisture eliminator included into that fan system, uh, and the fans provide the uh, airflow, proper amount of airflow, depending on uh, the sensors. And I, I want to uh, re-mention, if I haven't mentioned all the sensors in this system, uh, all the sensors that are located in the hot and the cold aisle that tell the monitoring control system how to manipulate the variable speed fans and how much water to apply to the evaporative media system. One of the things that I didn't cover was the amount of water the evaporative media system requires. The amount of water the evaporative system requires is a maximum of two gallons a minute when fully functional. The evaporative media system does not run 24-7, 365 days a year. It only opens these ball valves or these valves when the monitoring control system tells it that it needs to have some amount of water uh, run into the evaporative media system to keep the cooling uh, fun functioning properly. <laughs>